slandering the Dharma. The, uh, in every world that exists, obviously there's no one who does not age and die, so you understand this very well. Sending beings follow the law of karmic existence and in real life they will eventually die. So I think it's important to know that in every world, meaning the three worlds, and uh, to me this applies even to the heavenly realm. Although obviously they, they are a day that uh, is a very long time over here, but we need to understand that we're not just talking about this human world, but also in the heavenly realm. So suffering and joy result from one's own actions. Karmic consciousness creates the three periods, the past, the present, and the future. So therefore, this karmic consciousness, um, what it does is that a cause that's created from a past life, condition may arise in this life, and therefore it can manifest to an effect. Or could be a karmic cause created in the past life, condition doesn't arise in this period of life, that condition may arise in the future period. So therefore, it can transcend to three periods. In accordance with karma, we create transgressions and blessings through uh, retributions. Transgressions and blessings. So therefore, um, past negative karma will result in negative retribution and blessings will obviously come in the form of a uh, bless or, or merits that one can enable one to practice. So in here, Master's explanation is that in our current mindset in the present era, we remain in this period of Dharma genetic degeneration and era of declining human morality. And um, I, th I think we need to understand that part in relation to the condition of our practice. And uh, that's why what we are in this period we're in. So that in this condition of practice, we are, we, we are, I think more so uh, for us as a householder. And that's why um, sometimes um, what comes to us as a householder in practice, um, we do not know um, uh, what's uh, the, um, what, what may mesmerize us and therefore we get distracted uh, in the course of our life. And therefore we do fall into the trappings or what I call samsaric delights without us, us even knowing. And that's, what we, that's why one has to be very, very mindful and aware uh, of ourselves when we go into practice. So I won't run through this story, this story of a friend of an idiot, but I don't, you know, you have shared it a lot. And uh, but one important point to note is this, the last line, um, they said not realizing the letter, and it is the passage of uh, Sariputra, the letter of Riyatinara hardship. And this is the power that we could be very, very, very mindful of our speech. And um, when we are not mindful of our speech and whatever we say, um, we will have a lot of repercussions. We do not want, we do not know who we are talking to. And that's the reason why, um, one of the reasons, I shared with you all the uh, past few days of having meeting a humble sage that we do not know because he looks humble and he's not well known. Doesn't mean that person is not an enlightened being. So they got to be very respectful. And so long as we cultivate with the consciousness of awareness of ourself and mindfulness in our ways, then we'll be very mindful of our speech as well as our action uh, as a result, which obviously there are also many other stories of, of a slandering uh, or, or being rude uh, to an enlightened being, especially an Araha. And uh, so uh, you may want to check off on some of these, um, the tales, the Jataka tales, uh, you can um, read uh, some of them. And, um, and so therefore, I think that the point to note here is that how this infinity, negative or otherwise, um, can arise. Suffering from Sangha Dharma, for those who have slandered the Sutra in the past, when the people are reborn in the human realm, all the faculties will be incomplete. That's, and this is sadly so. And um, because just a sentence that slander it can result in innumerable lifetimes of suffering. 
So what is also important to note here is that even if reborn as a human, before long they will return back to the free will destiny, contrary with signatory mode, a solid, uh, solitary house, unlike those in the eight cold and the eight hot house. So this is um, the one that I shared with you in the past about the cold and the hot house, right? So the eight cold and the hot house, but this is even worse than that, okay? And um, therefore they um, um, just that it, it is a very, very severe uh, karmic retribution. Or they that in a human realm did not have a chance to listen to the Dharma. And this is about cutting off the uh, the the, um, the the Dharma the Dharma seeds to be able to not be able to learn the uh, Dharma and so therefore, like I say, we got to be uh, mindful, very very mindful in our practices, in much the same way, and also when we share as well. Okay, we got to be very mindful who the receiver or whoever the person is sharing. Uh, who is going to receive what we are sharing. So the lessons learned. So in our daily uh, living, we must be very cautious. Our mind must be free of desires. Uh, we should come to this world for the sake of transforming sentient beings and not engage in spiritual practice for ourselves. Obviously, this is also telling us that we cannot just be hearers. And um, so when we are daily we must be very cautious. Uh, why are we cautious? Being cautious is just having um, this consciousness of being mindful of our ways. I mean, very simple to being mindful is uh, let's be mindful with our um, speech, mindful of our actions. But more importantly is mindful of our thoughts. So if our thoughts are not mindful, Therefore, it can result in a speech and an action. But, but it's, it's easy to say. Then we say, let's be mindful with our speech. But then we, we, it's like, like we are battling uh, with our habitual tendencies. And very often, uh, especially those, uh, sometimes we are maybe very aggressive in a way that we work. So, and that become a habitual tendency and we will maybe very, uh, very authoritative to our subordinates. So, and when we come out in our daily life, we still carry on that habitual tendency without even us knowing. So we talk down to people as a result of this. Um, and, 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 and I think um, you, you, I'm, I'm sure you all have experienced this. Um, I recently, not so long ago, uh, although I was not present, um, there, there was an event that was being organized, and um, and this is about being organizing a uh, event for one of the uh, for the sangha community, and um, so what, this person was obviously very authoritative, <laughs> and um, to the extent that he actually uh, not realizing that he was telling everybody off when in the presence of the sangha. So. Sometimes when we do things in our own enthusiasm, especially in the family of our practitioners, we do not know who we are telling off. And uh, even you in the presence of the Sangha. So you gotta be very mindful about this. But being mindful of our ways, we also need to be very aware of our inner self. So if we lose the self, the inner self, we will lose a sort of self to become the non-self, then we will not take a lot of self-interest in our mind. But the problem is that a lot of times we are so driven in completing what has been set for us. We want to achieve our goals because that's the only ways of doing things. We want to achieve our goals, we're ambitious. But in the process of doing this thing, we are, do not know how many people we have hurt. So we should uphold, anyway, we should uphold aspiration of Buddhahood. That's the long-term aspiration. And we did, and we do so through the door of Bodhisattvahood. The suffering and joy result from one owns actions. And, um, and this coming concrete through the three periods, which I just explained to you at the beginning. So we must be, always be mindful to walk the path earnestly so that we do not reborn as a feathered or horned ones or fall into the lower realms. Um, I, I like the way Master has put this. Um, not a father, this should be the feathered, um, spelled wrongly, and the front, feathered and the horned ones. But progress beyond uh, samsara, and that's what we should be doing. So, in contemplation. 
protecting the Dharma is like protecting your faith. Is it not? Because that's what you believe in and that's what you understand. So it's like protecting the Dharma, protecting your faith. So you are a guardian of the teaching. I must protect the Dharma for the benefit of those interested in the path. And this resonates um, with, I think, kind of remember it was chapter 21 or 22 about um, uh, passing on the teachings. So we are the guardian of the teachings. So if you learn the teachings, we should be the guardian of the teachings to protect that. So you must have faith and go among the people so the teachings can be widely accepted. By not going astray and continue, continue forward, you are actually protecting the Dharma. So that's for we ourselves but may be well, well in practice and walking forward. So do not share the teaching with those who don't believe in it or have has no faith to prevent them from slandering, slandering the Dharma. So in my early days, I still remember I was a university student and um, I got a lot of Christian friends for some reason throughout my life. In my early life, I have a lot of Christian friends who want to obviously get me to become a Christian. Not that I don't want to, but I just that I asked a lot of questions. They couldn't give me uh, some of the answers. So, but it was one session that I was, uh, they invited me to attend and they were celebrating uh, with a video clipping of how they destroy the, um, the Kuan Yin image and the Buddha image and how they took off uh, from the households of those worshippers and destroying them. And I think, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was very sad to, to see that happening, but um, it did. So relationship, affinity in relationship, the truth cannot be un easily understood. And I explained that to you as a reason why um, in a few uh, sharing ago. So there are paradoxes that one need to understand to realize. The paradoxes is because they, that we are, it's very hard to understand the worldly ways and the spiritual ways. Therefore, share the teaching with only those who have the affinity to accept and understand them. So some of the paradoxes, for example, in the heart sutra, form is emptiness, emptiness is form. How can they easily understand that? So therefore, if one cannot and not ready to accept it, it's very difficult. So same thing with uh, in, in relationship that we have could be uh, with our spouse and so forth. You may be understanding the Dharma, but the other person may not be. So therefore, we got to be, uh, 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 we need to accept um, how the mind of, of others were, maybe the condition is not ready. So any misunderstanding or deluded doubts on their part will lead them to slander the Dharma. So pushing that to them, become very, they find it very medicine in their life. So we've got to be very mindful of our ways. So, and if that's the case, then we will result in immense karmic retribution for that person who is not in a position to accept. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Thank you so much to our brother Chin for another marvelous session.